Welcome to a proof that there are exactly five regular polyhedra. Recall that all of the faces of a regular polyhedron are identical regular polygons and that each vertex has the same degree. Consider four cases depending on the type of regular polygon. Case one, each face is a triangle. Let f be the number of faces, then there are three times f divided by two edges. Remember, when we multiply three in the number of faces, we are counting the number of edges twice because each edge borders two faces. And therefore, 3f divided by two gives us the number of edges. From Euler's formula, which is v minus e plus f equals two, where v is the number of vertices, e is the number of edges, and f is equal to the number of faces, we substitute 3f divided by two for e, which gives us v minus 3f divided by two plus f equals two. Solving for v, we have v equals two plus f divided by two. Now each vertex has the same degree, we'll call that k. So the number of edges, using the handshake lemma, is equal to the degree sum divided by two, which in this case is k times v divided by two. So using our equations, e equals three f divided by two, v equals two plus f divided by two, and e equals kv divided by two, we start with e equals three f divided by two, which is also equal to kv divided by two, and we substitute two plus f divided by two for v. Using this equation, we solve for k, which gives us k equals six f divided by the quantity four plus f. Both k and f must be positive integers. Note that six f divided by the quantity four plus f is an increasing function for positive values of f, bounded above by the horizontal asymptote k equals six. So notice as f increases without bound, k is approaching six but never reaches six. Thus, the only possible values for k are three, four, and five. Each of these are possible using the equation k equals six f divided by four plus f. When k is three, we have f equals four, which gives us a tetrahedron. Each vertex has degree three. There are four faces, and each face is a triangle. Next, when k is equal to four, we have f equals eight, which is an octahedron. And for k equals five, we have f equals 20, which is an icosahedron. Thus, there are exactly three regular polyhedra with triangular faces, which are shown here. Again, a tetrahedron, an octahedron, and an icosahedron. And now let's look at case two, where each face is a square. So now the number of edges is equal to four f divided by two, or just two f, where f is the number of faces. Using Euler's formula, we substitute two f for e, shown here below, which is v minus two f plus f equals two. Solving for v, we have v equals two plus f. And then counting edges using the degree k for each vertex, we have the number of edges e is equal to the degree sum divided by two, which again is kv divided by two. So using our equations, we begin with e equals two f, which is also equal to kv divided by two, and we substitute two plus f for v, Using this equation, we solve for k again, which gives us k equals four f divided by the quantity two plus f. Again, this is an increasing function, but this time, notice the horizontal asymptote is k equals four. Notice how to find the horizontal asymptote, we're just taking the coefficients of f in the numerator and denominator. You may remember this technique from calculus. So in this case, the only possible value for k is three, and if k is equal to three, f is equal to six, each vertex has degree three, and there are six square faces, which gives us a cube. There's only one regular polyhedron with square faces, which again is a cube. And now let's look at case three. Case three, each face is a pentagon. We perform the same calculations as in the previous cases, where now e the number of edges is equal to five f divided by two. Using Euler's formula, we have v minus 5f divided by two plus f equals two. Solving for v, we have v equals two plus three f divided by two. And then again, we have the number of edges e is equal to the degree sum divided by two, giving us e equals kv divided by two. So using our equations, we have e equals three f divided by two, which is also equal to kv divided by two, and we substitute two plus three f divided by two for v and then we solve for k, which gives us k equals 10f divided by the quantity four plus three f. Now the horizontal asymptote is 10 thirds, 
This is less than four, it's actually 3.6 repeating, or three and two thirds, so we only have k equals three. When k equals three, we solve for f, f is equal to 12, giving us 12 faces that are pentagons, which gives us a dodecahedron. This is the only regular polyhedron with pentagons as faces, which again is pictured below. And now let's look at the last case, case four. For case four, each face is an n-gon with n greater than or equal to six. Following the same procedure as before, the number of edges is equal to n times f divided by two. Using Euler's formula, we substitute nf divided by two for e, which gives us v minus nf divided by two plus f equals two. Solving for v, we have v equals two minus f plus nf divided by two. We also know the number of edges is equal to the degree sum divided by two, which again is e equals kv divided by two. Using our equations, we begin with e equals nf divided by two, which is also equal to kv divided by two, and we substitute two minus f plus nf divided by two for v. We take this equation and solve for k, which gives us k equals two nf divided by the sum of four and the product of n minus two and f, which again will be increasing to a horizontal asymptote of two n divided by the quantity n minus two. Notice two n and n minus two are being multiplied by f in the rational function. Because we're considering n greater than or equal to six, notice when n equals six, the horizontal asymptote would be k equals three, indicating k is approaching positive three, but k, the degree of each vertex, can't be less than three, and any larger value of n will give an even smaller asymptote, therefore, there are no regular polyhedra with faces larger than pentagons. I hope you found this helpful.